In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly and Andrew Fiore. The time has come again to check me on my stand. Everybody, before we get to the uh, the episode here, we just wanted to tell you guys, if, if you possibly can, please, please, please subscribe, rate, and review to the show. It really helps us as far as getting the word out about the show. We've mentioned it a bunch. It helps the algorithm of iTunes, and it puts us up on a bunch of lists and all sorts of stuff. So it can only help the show get better if you can subscribe, rate, and review, and tell your friends. You know, Tell your friends that are quarantined right now. We'd really appreciate it. Defenders, you're the best. Thank you so much. I was also here. (laughs) (laughs) Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another edition of your favorite podcast, my favorite podcast, your mom's favorite podcast. (laughs) It has to be Defend Your Movie. I am one of your hosts, Sean Donnelly, and I am joined here by the effervescent Andrew Fiore, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) What a nice intro. Thank you very much. uh, Yeah, man. I'm I'm really trying to be a positive person these days. Oh, good to see you. Good to be back. It's hard not to be, you know, in your head during the core. core. Yeah, I think that's one of the major hurdles, personally, that I've had to get over. It's just, you know, we both, I mean, you have a roommate. I live alone. It's it's tough, man. Well, I feel bad. Like you must have it. You have like being alone in that place. Like you must be bouncing off your walls. I'm bouncing off the walls. I'm I'm trying to stay home as much as as possible. Right. I, I've driven out to my parents' house a few times just to see them and stay in the driveway and backyard. You know. Yeah. Because I'm so yeah. scared about this thing. But also, I've tried to live my life as best possible. Go for walks and see friends at a safe distance. You know. So yeah, like we said, that it helps, you. man. So. Well, I saw you at the park and only safe distance. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, uh, other than that, um, things are going good. It's a nice day out here in, in Queens, New York, where we live. And I'm ready to talk some movies, pal. All righty. Uh, oh, I got to tell you, I watched a ton of stuff. Like, Ooh. I don't even know if we'll get to the, the, the topic, uh, but it's a really great topic. You want to tell everybody what the topic is this week? Yeah, we got a good one. We figured uh, this is something I had written down on my list uh, for a while now. And for whatever reason, we didn't get to it. But we thought we'd dig into biopics, which I think is a fun topic. There's so many great ones out there. And uh, there's a ton of really good ones. We've got two different points of view and you'll we'll get to that. But first, what'd you watch? Oh, dude, this is how many I've watched. Um, I have to go to my list. (laughs) Do you want me to give you one? Um, okay, so the first one, I'll, I'll, well, yeah, you want to start first? I watched a very cool movie that was a straight Netflix find uh, called Bleed Like This. Have you ever heard of it or seen it, Johnny? No. It's a great <laughs> boxing movie, flew way under the radar. It's a true story. It's about uh, Vinny Pazienza. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, oh. Rhode Island boxer. Um, I've heard the name before. Yeah. Uh, he was a guy who um, was a middleweight, featherweight kind of boxer, uh, pro boxer, but was doing very well for himself, had a title fight, won a title fight, and gets in this terrible car accident. Like, Oh, my God. Breaks bones in his neck. They don't know if he's ever even going to walk again, let alone box again. And through the, point of the, through the whole uh, plot of the movie is basically – the comeback story. Um, it's you know it's a biopic in itself actually, so we can uh, give away spoilers because every it's a true story. He kind of works out against doctor's orders his whole time in his recovery. He's got one of those halo things on. Yeah, one of those big. Yeah, where it's connected to your head. Things. And yeah, they're like, like one, one of the things the- from uh, what, what, what Joan Cusack wears in uh, Better right, Off, right, Better right. Off yes. whatever that is. In, in not, but one of the, one of the John Hughes movies. John Cusack has that giant like head brace thing. Yeah. So he's kind of working out the whole time against doctor's orders. They're like, hey, one slip in the wrong direction, uh, you're going to be paralyzed for life. And 
He's just kind of through determination and also through stubbornness uh, overcomes all the uh, the br- bones breaking and the halo and the surgeries. And it's a really good movie. Miles Teller plays the guy. And I got to say, that kid's a good actor. Miles Teller. Miles, uh, is he the one? Um, he's the kid he's from the Whiplash. Guy, Miles Teller. Yeah, he is good. He's a good actor. He's very like he he stands out as amongst like the the average Joe type actors. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like he's very understated, but he's a good actor. Yeah, and uh, Aaron. Like, there's a million guys that look like him. Like he looks like a Jonas brother to me. Like I just all those. He's just like a white guy <laughs> right. type of thing. You know. So, uh, really good boxing movie, man. I don't know how this kind of went under the radar. Uh, bleed for this. Check it out. Was it straight to Netflix or was it in the theaters? Pretty. Cool. I don't know. Um. It was from 2016, and it looks like it did terribly at the box office. <laughs> <laughs> and Miles Teller plays Vinny Pacienza? Yes. Uh, Aaron okay. Eckhart plays his trainer. Katie Seagal's in it. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's also like a great Rhode Island, East Coast kind of gangster, 80s, yeah. early 90s. It's just a fun picture, and I really enjoyed it, man. So, Did anybody try to put on the accent like in uh, Outside Providence? When, it's, not, uh, <laughs> it's not as bad. I didn't notice it, so that must have meant it was pretty good. Okay, that's good. Then maybe they just did, maybe they're like maybe they're just like don't even do it. Like it's better not to do it at that point. Yeah, uh, that's cool. I'll check. I would check it out because I like boxing movies. I good... watched. I watched the Fighter. Speaking of biopics, it's like that's one of my favorites as well. I've watched The Fighter uh, multiple, multiple times. That's actually a really good movie. It's a David, not David O. Russell. Is it David O. Russell? No, yeah, it's, it, is. Um, it is. David O. Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Christian Bale. And, and <laughs> Christian Bale, man. Stu Costello. Like, <laughs> Stu Costello. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. uh, Christian Bale is really, I think he doesn't get his due because it's like one of those things where he's almost like Joaquin Phoenix light. And I, that sounds like an insult, but it's not like, Think about it. he's a guy who's he's in movies and you can still believe he's the characters. That's the thing that yes. we talk about a lot on the podcast. Like when do you get the Tom Hanks effect where it's not any the guy yep. anymore? It's yep. just Tom Hanks. Yep. Like Tom Hanks playing Mr. Rogers, another biopic. Like it's not Mr. Rogers anymore. Yes. Uh, it's just Tom Hanks. Christian Bale, you put him in the fighter. Yeah, you knew it was Christian Bale, but you watch that video at the end of the movie where they have the actual brother, uh, Manny, not Manny Pacquiao, uh, Mickey Ward's brother. Right. And you're like, uh, uh, Dude, it's like he he's the guy. Like it's it, he does a pretty pretty good dead on impression of this guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I like uh, boxing yeah, movies. So I'll great, check man. it out. Yeah, uh, I have one that's kind of related to last week. Remember oh, I told right, you sir. I watched I watched a movie called The Silence. Yes. With Stanley Tooch with the Tooch with the Tooch Toochie Gang Toochie Gang Toochie Gang. I. Uh, I watched the actual Quiet Place. Yeah, what'd you think? And uh, here's the thing, man. Like, it's so funny how you can have the movie have basically the same plot, and one movie can be so much better than it's like. I know. It just shows you the magic of movie making. Yeah. First off, Krasinski as a director, spot on, man. Great. I job. know. Yeah. Ridiculous. Like, like basically every. It's really hard because if you think about it, like. This this is one of these movies, A Quiet Place, that you go into it. When you hear the story, you go, what? And everybody is a little bit cynical when they hear that. Now, right. if you watch The Silence, you go, yes, that's exactly how I thought it would play out. And it's comically bad, right? Yep. But you watch A Quiet Place, and you're like, they nailed it. They yeah. made me... Like that. What, talk about uh, like it, it's. It almost becomes a Hitchcockian level as far as like I know. It's uh, a very hard playing technique. with the sound and the shots and the lighting and 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 it's it's a really well done like horror ish type thriller ish movie. I loved and it. It was good. Really loved it. Right. It really great acting yeah. in it. Uh, the girl, the girl from Mad Men is in the other one, The Silence, and. She's supposed to be definite. And this one, like the girl, you're like, she's actually deaf. Like she's deaf. Like, <laughs> now, when you were telling me girl, about this last week, I'm like, wait, that's the exact same movie. <laughs> the only difference is that one of them is aliens. The other one's bir- prehistoric birds. <laughs> that's the only difference. And then, and the other one is like in the silence, they talk way louder. The quiet place. They're like, we're sticking to our universe's rules. Like we're yeah, sticking to yeah. them hardcore. You can't, you can barely make any sound in the silence. They're having like barbecues or shooting off guns. Like <laughs> <laughs> they got fireworks. Like they're like, yeah, like, 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 don't worry. The, the birds take off on the weekends. Don't worry about, it. you know, like it's, it's like, 
<laughs> like it's it's a sloppy storytelling at best. You know what Was I mean? Was there any like, lines where like now you fly south for the winter? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but that would be amazing if there was. I told you they introduce that weird, like uh, the no tongue cult that, that comes by, which is actually kind of a terrifying idea. But that becomes that becomes more menacing than the actual birds. Like they kind of figure out the birds, right? And that's right. this is in the silence. But watching a quiet place, man, and and I, and people who haven't seen it, I'm going to kind of mention a uh, a part. The very last, I love the very last moment of the movie. I yeah. love it. Because yeah. first off, it sets up a sequel, but not in a corny way. Yep. And there's literally what happens is, well, you know, uh, they realize that the girl, the, the hearing aids that Krasinski has been making, it's a great tie-in. It's almost like the tie-in that Signs wanted but couldn't pull off. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, great the example. The water and the water glasses. I know. It's the it fucking has that, water. It, but I still love Signs. I'm, I'm I, I was I, just I such a, a cop-out to an otherwise great movie. I just I just dived into the universe and I was like I don't care it's it's so well done up until that point I'm like yeah, I I'll agree. take that ride that's fine by me and there's enough of a, a scare at the end with the kid with the asthma in science that I'm like it's fine yeah but when it comes to a quiet I'm place, children <laughs> it's such a great scene such a great yeah scene. that's comes to, the fuck um, out of me the first time I saw that when that oh, when, homie, I when homie walks by the bushes I lost my mind I saw it in the theater and I was like ah! did you say homie did you say homie yeah, whatever they're called, the aliens. Uh, please, uh, oh, homie, oh, homie, the, the alien? The, yeah, the when alien homie is your homie? By, what, homie was at the <laughs> when you're so boy. big homie, that green alien? That's, <laughs> anyway, in Quiet Place. <laughs> excuse me. Oh, boy. I don't like this. Shawnee's got no, the No, no, it's bit. dry. That's my dry throat. Um, all right. In A Quiet Place, they had the tie-in is that all the hearing aids or the hearing devices that Krasinski, her father's been working on, put out a frequency that fucks with the aliens. And it's great. And they kind of foreshadow it early on. And you're like, you kind of see where it's going. And at the end, they're in the house. And she has one of them. She puts it on the frequency. It messes the thing up. They shoot it with a shotgun and kill it because it slows it down. And the very last scene, with people who don't know, is this great moment. It's her and her mom, Emily Blunt. And, and they killed the one. And on the monitors they have to see who's coming up to the house, you see all the rest of them coming up. And the, mo- and the gir- little girl turns up the volume on the, on the frequency, and the mom just pumps the shotgun, and they look at each other. That's the end of the movie. I Such thought, a badass ending. I, I know. I, I'm glad you loved it because I loved it as well. I, I, and I know your whole thing with horror movies, but it's more of like a suspense movie than horror, I would say. And it's even suspense thriller. It's, it's just it's like not that, it's, it's not a horror movie. movie. It's, a, it's, it's a sci-fi movie. and it's, it's that's what's so funny about the horror thing. Like me not liking horror, but I love movies like this. So it's yeah, not. It's, it's a great movie. I don't man. mind being scared. I just don't like like gross out horror shit. Yeah, I, you know. Yeah, you know I've saying? never been a fan of like the Saw movies. Which is, like, I've never seen any horror. of them. I'm just like, eh. Yeah. It, it, yeah. But I loved the way they did it too. They they sign, They kind of set that up like little father daughter strife too, where she's like, you don't care enough about me to pay attention to me and he's like it really shows at the end you're like no that's what he he just wanted to fix you so badly well, one of the, is that so what much. it was or is does he blame her because there's like their other kid dies early in the movie early in the crisis yeah and the, one of the one of the things right uh is that what it is no, yeah like, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah the they, baby uh, dies, the little, little kid dies and the other the other uh mitigating factor is that uh um uh the Dude, emily what a moment pregnant. that is when the fucking Siren goes off and you go, oh, no. Uh, oh, oh, my God. It's crazy. So um, I think that he also, she thinks he resents her, her because she was watching. Well, either she gave the kid back the toy that made the noise. Yeah. Well, what happened was they were in the supermarket and the mother, you know, or the father took the toy away from the boy. It was like, you know, this, uh, this could kill us if it makes right. a noise. Right. So it's the, the very daughter, opening scene. You're, it starts off. You're in the action. It's great. Yeah, the daughter grabs it for him and secretly gives it to the. To right. The, okay. So, th- so that's why she thinks. Right. That he doesn't like her. Because it's, it's and, kind of her fault. The kid's dead. And then like the kid all like happened to grab the batteries too. Um, yeah. But here's the thing, man. What a great, what a great idea. What a great yeah. story idea. Because it and, makes it so much deeper. Really hard to pull off, but it's done really well where you don't even pay attention to n- there not being any dialogue. Uh, you don't. You absolutely it's don't. really great. You just keep you're on the edge of your seat. You're kind of waiting for the next thing. I didn't watch A Quiet Place too. I heard it wasn't that great, but no, I don't. Think it never got released, dude. It was like, oh, is that what happened? Okay, that so was, I thought it just. I thought it just came and went. No, Quiet Place Two was like one of the first 
uh, casualties of uh, the quarantine. It was like March 21st release date. Or you know what's so funny is that I, I lied, but I didn't lie. The reason why I said I heard it wasn't that good is because I didn't hear anything about it. That's what I meant by that. Yeah. You know what's so I, funny? I, I, I lied, but I was like, well, I didn't hear much about it, and the first one was such a big deal. It must have sucked. I think I just made that connection yeah, no, in my head. Yeah, it just never got released. I, I was looking forward to it. I wonder if they'll do it on demand. I would watch that in a second. I hope so, because I need stuff to watch, which leads me to my other... This is the other thing I watched last night, and I loved this book. It was The Goldfinch uh, by Donna Tartt. Oh, uh, yeah. The book is fantastic. I believe it won the Pulitzer Prize, and the movie... Stunk to high heaven. Holy is shit. Is it just boring or what's the deal? It was very long. It was like two and a half hours long. And here's the thing. The book is very twisty and it's very dialogue heavy. And there's a lot of moving parts to that story. To make that into a movie was very would have been very difficult and they did not accomplish it. They left out oh. chunks of the book oh. and it doesn't even scratch the surface of the story. I, I didn't hate it. It was like... I've been rating things in a quarantine scale show where I'm like, yeah, it was good for the quarantine. You know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of changes. It gives everything like a curve. It's on a curve or something. Yeah. So it was like, it was, it was passable. It was quarantine passable. Um, I really stuck it out because I enjoyed the book so much. It's uh, Ansel Elgort, that kid uh, who was Baby Driver. He yeah. plays uh, the lead. And, yeah, um, he's. Uh, I might, you know, my feelings. If you listen to the podcast, you know my feelings on Baby Driver. So yeah. I don't know if that sours me on Ansel. Also, what sours me is his name is Ansel. <laughs> well, yeah, he didn't really do anything to win me over more in this one. Um, Fucking Euro trash. Nicole Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> there kidding, it is. There's um, my, ethno, my ethnocentrism. <laughs> and a Seinfeld reference, Euro trash. <laughs> oh yeah that's right yeah you're right uh but it was just it's one of those ones where you hate to be cliche but you just go yeah the book was better the book was just way better well, that, well that's the stereotype but that's a thing because it's a thing it's a real thing right 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 that's a saying because that happens a lot a lot a lot like to pull off a movie on a great book sometimes is really really hard yeah it's funny too that three of like my top five favorite movies of all time are Better movies than the books. Jaws, Godfather, and Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah. I've read them all, too. It, 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 and it, Wise it, Guys it, it, is a fun read, too. If you haven't read the book, uh, Nicholas Pledge's Wise it's, Guys, yeah, yeah. you'll be reading it, and then all of a sudden, you'll hear Henry Hill's voice because you're reading the exact voiceover that they took <laughs> right from the book. It happened to me a few times, and you're like, oh, that's great. Goodfellas is so fantastic. All right, so I watched – another one I watched. I watched – I have four more. <laughs> <laughs> I you watched. Two uh, I watched the original Death Wish. Oh, that's great. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, it's it. I, I, Pat Stango, who's a friend of the podcast, he's been on a yep, couple forward, times. Yes. He watched it re- like maybe a month or two ago, and he was like, "It's great, it's great." I wasn't that. It was like. It's very dated to me. It wasn't it that great to me. Like it was like you know what it is. It, it actually proves like how much more violent movies have gotten because, and also you wanted the story to be because uh, spoiler alert on a forty year old movie. Uh, <laughs> he never he never actually gets the guys that his wife his wife gets raped and killed and his he never and daughter, gets yeah. the guys that actually he, he never gets the guys that actually did it. Did you now, notice one was a, point a that, young Jeff Goldblum? Yes, it was Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, as, <laughs> and, he, and he rapes, they raped women. It's really vicious. That's the most vicious part of the whole movie. Yeah, that's the really stuff that used to be more more raw in older movies. I think Death Wish is from 74. Um, but yeah, then the violence kind of te- teeters off. But I, yeah, yeah I, he's just going around like as a vigilante. It's like more of a realistic story of what a guy like that would do. That's why I liked it. But I was like, I think I was expecting a lot more. And I'm sure as you get to Death Wish Four, it probably he becomes like it becomes like Die Hard or he becomes like a superhero kind of thing. Have you ever seen The Simpsons? Uh, instead of Branson, Missouri, it's Bronson, Missouri. Oh, it's the best. He goes, Hey, Ma, can I, I get some cookies? Cream. He goes, Let me no get dice. some cookies. He goes, No dice. Hey, Ma, <laughs> let me get some cookies. <laughs> no dice no dice it's one of the best things ever oh so I love that. bronson that's missouri. a 10 second genius moment in the simpsons um, bronson missouri hey man <laughs> that's some cookies i have i watched that within two years as well i saw the original on tv and i just stuck with it and just to watch it 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty good recap, I think. Yeah, do you want me to save? I have well, actually I had five total. To, um, uh, so you want me to save? Let's uh, knock them out. We'll go through them quickly. All right, cool. Well, one of them is be really quick. I rewatched Die Hard three. Okay. Uh, I still I still contend that the first one is the better um, Die Hard. And, the for the best you. one out of all with three. the vengeance Die out of all three of the trilogy. The other ones don't count. I watched Do Over with um, David Spade and Adam Sandler. It's one of those Adam Sandler Netflix uh, movies that came yeah. out 2016. There's funny parts because you love those guys, but some of the some of the gags are like you're like that's ooh, what are you doing? Yeah, there? like it's a, a little bit like they don't know when to kind of edit sometimes, you know. I've loved Adam so Sandler where, since SNL, but I've always thought after Happy Gilmore, most of the movies have been like that. Well, even like Big Daddy is good. I, I, to be honest, I didn't. I enjoyed the win with him and Jennifer Aniston. I was like, it's right. not his typical Murder thing, but I'm like, or- it was a. Yeah, it was like a fun little movie. This one, it's just a little bit too like they're just trying to like it's a lot of gay jokes like that. He does that, I guess. Like there's a lot yeah. of jokes about like impl- it's like it's weird because it's like ex- it's like there's a lot of it. It's, it's accepting of it, but there's a lot of mentions of like there's a whole scene about him getting about getting um, fucked in the ass by the this one <laughs> of the bad guys or, or you know something stuck in his ass. But like there's multiple things like that about gay yeah. sex, and I'm like. Yeah. It's not. I don't know. It just seems a little bit old. Like there's, it, it, there's so much funnier with other, other weirder stuff. You know. I know. Anyway, that's Joe over. It's. I wouldn't say you have to check it out. There's some funny parts, but you know, whatever. Um, and then the other one, the big one that I was uh, uh, really looking forward to watching, and it did not disappoint. Uh, Last Blood, Rambo. Oh. Which you could the also most say is a. One? It's a biopic of Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Should I watch um, it? What? Did I watch it? Yes. Dude, Rambo movies are so violent. They're so yeah, violent. Yeah, yeah. It's so – it's cartoonishly funny how – I remember I saw – this is the last one that came out, but the one that came out right before it, uh, John Rambo, whatever it was called, or it was just called right. Rambo. Yeah, yeah. That one is so funny how violent it is. It's just so ridiculous. <laughs> and this one is even like they just go – they just take it to a new level, and it's a great story. Uh, and it's, just, it's, it, it's the I one where he's got to save his niece or something. No, he doesn't. He doesn't save his niece. Well, yeah, right, right. He's gonna save oh. his niece. That's what it is. I mean, but whatever. That, I didn't ruin the movie for you. Okay. It, that happens early on. That happens. It's a revenge movie. Put it that way. Put it. That All right. Way. But it's definitely worth. Don't you didn't. I didn't ruin it for you. Go check it out because it's so funny to watch him. I think but I it's got weird you. because it's, it's almost after, like after Creed, he realized this is what I should be playing in these movies. The old stalwart the old guy yeah, yeah. the old uh the old great, curmudgeon man. kind of thing you know yeah so that's what i watched i watched a bunch i've been trying to watch as many movies as possible you know? i know i know well should we get to the meats and the peats baby let's go for the meats and the peats <laughs> biopics fun topic a lot of great ones out there i think um i think our tastes differ a little bit when it comes to the biopics well we're gonna we thought do... about doing a straight up one on one, straight up matchup. <laughs> yeah, directions. Um, well, what it is is when it, when it comes into because I got to be honest, like was, when you said your pick, I was like, is that a biopic? And it Absolutely. is. But I think of it as a Scorsese picture. Um, yeah, I don't know why I thought that. It's absolutely a biopic. But I was like, but I but I also love the movie. So yeah. so you when we when we brought up the topic, your first pick was like was Raging Bull. You Raging, Raging Bull, Bull. baby. The story of Jake LaMotta, um, which, yeah, I guess a lot of people consider this their favorite and Scorsese's best film. I don't, but it's up there in my top three, I would say. It's becoming my Scorsese f- favorite because I haven't seen it as much as Goodfellas. Right, 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 right. Um, um, best actor for Bobby De Niro, uh, who plays Jake LaMotta, and it's you know, famously at the time gained like 60 pounds to play older Jake LaMotta. But I mean, just, this is a beautiful picture. Look at me. It's in the black and white. It's got those classic Scorsese zoom shots and it's great boxing shots. And uh, it really, I guess, kicked off the Pesci De Niro kind of Scorsese love affair. Uh, Absolutely. It's like, you know, it's like a Martin Lewis. um, Yeah. It's like finding, oh my god, I gotta stick with this guy as much as possible, or that, or, or or audiences were thinking that, you know. Right, right. 
and um, just yeah, Kathy Moriarty is great in it. But it, there's Frank uh, Frank Vincent is in it. Um, it's such a beautiful. Yeah. the score is so beautiful in the movie, and it's just it's really it's I think Scorsese. It's most like art house film. You know what I mean? Well, it also starts off this uh, this running gag of. Pesci and Frank Vincent going back and forth, beating the shit out of each other or killing <laughs> right. or killing. Because if you think about it, uh, Frank it's Vincent, uh, uh, he beats up. He, what does he do in this one? Uh, he beats up Pesci, right? Yeah. He's uh, well, well, uh, no, Pesci uh, breaks the glass over his head. I think it's been a few years since I've seen it. Um, oh, okay. Is that, oh, right. Is that what it is? Okay. So Pesci does that when they're at the restaurant. Then, yeah. Joey Salvo. Oh, so then, Right. Okay. So that's what it is. I, I haven't seen it a bit. And uh, and then you have Goodfellas where Pesci fucking kills yeah, Billy Bats, bat. who's Frank Vincent. And then you have Frank Vincent get his revenge at the at casino and casino by burying Joe Pesci alive. <laughs> I never put that together. That's so funny. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, and I, you know, I, mean, I don't know. I think they must He's have noticed breathing. that was going yeah. on. Oh, oh, that is a. I, that's an un, I, like I like Casino, but that's an uneasy. I can't watch that scene. Yeah, that I know it's tough. They're in there. It's he's really his, rough. He's in his blue tidy whities too. That always yeah. Threw me off. I think that adds to it. <laughs> like if he was in like, it's so funny. What, what, would your mind change if he was in boxer briefs, <laughs> which they didn't have at the time? But like if he was in boxer shorts, which they did have, it's and really like blue. in like a wife beater or something, <laughs> there would just be so much more dignity in Casino. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like your pretty man in jockey shorts with tidy whities. You're it's just that much less still breathing, dignified. Ugh, he's still breathing. Oh yeah, he's like ah, oh, he's like leave him alone. He's still breathing. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> it's such a crazy scene. Um, so that was my that's that was my number one pick. Um, yeah, and, my, and I loved yours was, too. I it was between those two for me, to be honest. Well, yeah. So the the first, my mind immediately when I hear biopic, uh, and I think there's a reason for this, and I just realized that that's why I was looking at my phone because I wanted to look up something else. My mind goes to Amadeus, which came out in like 1984, and yeah. um, best picture winner. It's, it's Mozart's uh, biopic. It's uh, uh, Wolfgang. And it's, uh, yeah, and it's Tom Hulse playing Mozart, and it's I got F. Murray Abraham playing Salieri, who is like this jealous composer oh, that's, so that's narrating the whole thing so it's it's a biopic that's done by somebody who is in all of the the biopic subject but also yeah. has so much hate for them that's why it's so interesting and such a great movie um it was god guess, laughing at me <laughs> yeah it, it's it's such a it's so amazing and he's so good in it but also um i think the reason i think of it is it's directed by a man named milos Forman. And yeah. Milos Forman did like multiple biopics. He was almost like the go-to biopic director for the eighties and nineties or something, because he did that. He did um, the people versus Larry Flint and he did man on the moon. Ooh, he's your biopic pick. If you're... He's my biopic pick. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting to me. I was like, cause that's where I go right away. Cause I'm like, Oh, but he's the guy, he's the guy to do biopics. You know, like I, I don't know why I have, that's like a side thing, you know, whatever it is. But, uh, I think, but when you put Amadeus up against Raging Bull, God, first off, they're two different movies, but they are both biopics. So you should be able yeah. to match them up. But I don't know if I can pick a favorite from those two things. I know. It's really tough. Both very I mean, flawed guys. Uh, it's, you can make the comparisons if you look for them, you know? Um, I would say Mozart, I'm, I'm a, Mozart is a character that you – kind of empathize with Salieri and you because it's hard not to hate Mozart when you watch the movie but it's also impossible not to well, appreciate that's kind of telling because um why because of how they're trying to make him like annoying and childish and yeah and a little it's a little so bit jealous of him cocky so the guy yeah 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 but also you're but, like all right Salieri stop being a little bitch you know <laughs> <laughs> To use use the parlance of the times, stop yeah, being to, a bitch, Salieri. <laughs> to use seventeenth century verbiage. <laughs> um, yeah, you kind of go back and forth, but you you get you get his viewpoint because it's, it's and honestly, to be honest, to bring it to the comedy world, I get it. If I if there was a biopic about John Mulaney, no, you know what? I was going to say John Mulaney. 
I beat the Salieri <laughs> in that biopic. But but actually, no, I don't have that look on it. I, I don't have like a – I have a thing like I wish the, – the, the emulation thing I think I have for that where it's like, man, I'll never be that good in what, I, what we both do. You know, I'll never, be, I'll never be that guy in like his point of view or his, you know um, – Sure. His sure. Thing. So, so I think that's part of that's why it's such an interesting pick because it's not all hate. It's it's he's in it, like I said, he's in awe of the talent, but he can't believe that it's being squandered with this child. Like that's the way he's thinking of it. Yeah. And yeah. in actuality, it was like, yeah, the guy was probably cocky, but he was he was like a guy who he had a silver spoon since he was like, talent wise, and he did what he wanted since he was probably four years old, five years old. Like he. You know, I, what was yeah. it? Wasn't it Mozart was like like four or something insane? It's like a, it's like a child star. It's like the equivalent of like a child star now. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, like, he's like Jonathan he had Taylor Thomas life. of his time. Yeah, so it's like a, he's like you know what it was? Mozart was Justin Bieber. Mozart was fucking Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah. But with but Justin Bieber has less talent. Let's be honest. Like he's not as you know, talented kid. But, just, but as far as you the, had to convince me, let's be honest. If we're comparing the two, Mozart probably edges him out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to alienate all those Bieber, all those Mozart. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess they'd be Mozart fans. Uh, the believers. Anyway, believers. The believers. I'll but, give you. Um, I'll give you another great uh, lavish piano biopic. How about Behind the Candelabra? I never watched it. I think I'm, oh, I'm afraid. Oh, it's great. I, I'm afraid of the, uh, the scene. There's a scene, like an anal sex scene that I heard is so creepy about it. I honestly don't really remember that, so it couldn't have been that. Maybe somebody made it up. <laughs> lavish. But I mean, I mean, it's a pretty gay film because you're dealing with Liberace. Who's well, not the gay, gay aspect gay to it. Not the gay aspect. I don't mind that. I don't mind. I don't even mind if it was a gay sex scene. I don't mind that. I just heard it's very, I thought I heard it was very, very like, creepy dynamic and i thought maybe it was just like you know like where the actual dynamic to the two characters was creepy during the scene you know it'd be like i mean like it was almost like borderline vibe. rape scene or something what liberace is so he's, he's an odd duck man and, and he gives off kind of a creepy vibe but it's a great movie dude it's steven soderbergh i think you'd love it oh i gotta check it out matt damon's great in it it's got a great cast it's got our pal tom papa's in it for crying out loud Wow, it's Tom Papa and Steven Soderbergh are really good friends, huh? Yeah, yeah. They have a uh, – uh, th- no, the movie is fantastic. I think you'd love it. Check it out. And it's kind of along those lines. It's, you know, same music as uh, Mozart. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I will check that out, actually. I, I will watch that. It's on probably on HBO Go. Uh, I believe it is. Yeah, I also uh, – well, I wanted to also talk the other Milos Forman ones, People versus Larry Flint, People, that did really Great well. One. Uh, that's a that's a good one. I think if I had to rate the Milos Forman biopics, it would be Amadeus, L- Flint, and then Man on the Moon. I wanted to hear what you think about Man on the Moon. I don't love it because I don't love Jim Carrey, and yeah. I think oh, he, you mean in general? In general, but I think he makes it a Jim Carrey movie instead of a movie about Andy Kaufman. Well, it's very hard to pull off Andy Kaufman. It was exactly. one in a million. Like think about, it, there's been nobody like Andy Kaufman since, I, and also like. The whole it's funny because the 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 thing you're trying to do negates the point of Andy Kaufman. Like the, correct, the, the carbon copy Andy Kaufman is not nobody's going to buy that completely. Like, yeah, and I go, think they kind of tried to do it at the end with the uh, what's the other what's the character he plays the Tony Clifton. Tony Clifton, yeah. So I think they kind of tried to pull that. It's a really straight. bad version of Tony Clifton. Yeah. Uh, there's moments where I don't mind Jim Carrey's performance in it, but Agreed. I think they probably, they probably could have cast it better. But from what I understand, there was a lot of drama when that movie came out as far as the casting went. Everybody was dying to play Andy Kaufman at the time. Oh, really? Like, Nick, Nicholas Cage uh, auditioned for it, um, <laughs> which might have been a good – I don't know if he could have pulled it off, but it would have been a more interesting pick to me. But Nicholas Cage to me I, – I, I like Jim Carrey. Like, I'm not, you don't like him – I don't think he's funny, but I, I like – Jim, I like a lot of dramatic Jim Carrey stuff. I just, it's like yeah. you said, you can't, with Tom Hanks, it's like sometimes you can't differentiate Jim Carrey with the character. That's why I like the Truman Show because he kind of made that character, it's a believable character. Yes. Jim Carrey esque character. So it works. Yeah. But yeah. like, it's, it's to be a regular guy. Yeah. Um, when it's I'm like watching probably him, some of the. Best. Well, he's also great. He's in one of my favorite movies, and I love. He's great. I know you love Sunshine, Sunshine. Spotless Mind. Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, and he is. He's really good in that. 
Yeah, I, I, he's just a bit much for me. It's kind of the same thing I had with Robin Williams. And I know that's, you know, heresy to say for a lot of people, but it's kind of go, you're kind of a bit much for me. That's it's just Yeah, no, I, I get it. You don't have to be a fan, but when it comes to this movie, I'm like, I, I knowing the, because, all right, so the casting, there was a lot of drama around the casting, like I said. And I, there's, I think there's a story behind it that I can't recall right now, but Jim Carrey like went to the lengths of I think he was showing up and pulling Andy Kaufman type stuff to try to get cast in it. Like he was he right, was right. he That's was pulling right. all sorts of shit to try to like show that he's the most dedicated to play this character. So I think that's part of the reason he got it. If not, I don't I'm not saying he's not a talented guy, but there's probably other people you could have put in there that would have been better at that. Like even Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage to me. And Jim Carrey, after a while, I think when it when it was when it was when it was decided that Jim Carrey was like the um, the everyman comedic star, and he was making twenty million a picture, I think something happened in his head where he's like, "No, I'm not. I'm a weird artist. I'm a weird artist, and yeah. I'm going to show you I'm a weird artist." And to me, it's very obvious when people do that. Like, it's very obvious when people go, "No, look look how look how different I'm being." And Nicolas Cage, I think, is an authentic like Looney Tune. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he's authentically uh, eccentric, authentically, uh, yeah. authentically. That is him. Jim Carrey, when he does the things like, you know, he dresses up his stuff. And uh, even when, even when they had that doc- the documentary turned me off on Jim Carrey a little bit. The one about, about the making of man on the moon, where it was like, yeah, where he, I was couldn't doing, even watch he was being Andy Kaufman off the, on like, um, uh, when the cameras weren't rolling and you had all these people that worked with Andy Kaufman, they were like, no, 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 no. He was a good guy. Jim's just being right. a dick. Like it was like that kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, dude, you don't get it. Like you don't get, you, you, exactly. you don't get it enough to do it. Now, now this is a 20 year old thing, so it doesn't matter. And I did enjoy the movie overall, but that, there was parts of it. I didn't like because of that I think, yeah, the, the acting, um, I always wonder about Jim Carrey because there's a part in, in liar, liar, uh, I, I like the movie Liar Liar. I think he's funny in it. Yeah. There's a part where there's in one of the um, bloopers where a Swoozy Kurtz, they're going back and forth insulting each other with names for the movie. And, yeah. she, and he, she, he goes, Hag. And she goes, Overactor. She calls him over an overactor. And he starts laughing, and everybody starts laughing on the set. And I always wonder, did he know that's the way he was thought of on that set? Like, I always oh, I kind of feel hilarious. bad. I always feel kind of bad. But, but he like laughs, and I'm like, I don't think he maybe cares. I think he probably knew when he was doing those comedies. It wasn't like the, it was pretty broad acting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I always wonder like, Oh, is that what got in his head? Like what people were saying, like you're a, like, you're kind of a clown to this. You're that. Well, here's Instead the of embracing that, you know, his masterpiece, dumb and dumber. He's not doing the Jim Carrey overacting thing. And he plays it so perfectly. No, you're right. Dumb and dumber to me is, is head, head and shoulders above, above the rest of those comedies that he did. Yeah. Uh, we could keep going on uh, musicians alone, but I'll give you uh, one, maybe a group biopic. How do you feel about Straight Out of Compton? Uh, never saw it. Crazy young brother named Ice Cube. I heard it's great though. It's I really never, good. I never checked it out. I, I think it, it came and it went, and I forgot to watch it. I did want to watch it. Oh, you should. It's fun because well, you know well, we're nineties nineties East Coast kids. Hip hop was big in yeah. our lives. Skateboarding. And, well, they're, uh, they're West Coast though. Yeah, but that was. Uh, Oh, it was part of it. Yeah, musical yeah, yeah. over, if you will. Well, uh, I how was the, how was and I was always curious. I never asked anybody how was Ice Cube's son acting wise in that movie. He looks exactly like him. You fucking go. That's Ice Cube. Right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what he's I was actually, like. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, the best one. O'Shea Jackson. He's great. He's in. Um, he's got some other stuff cooking too. He kind of broke out of that mold. Um, and he's that's a cool. good young actor. I think I, I like him a lot. But um. It's it's a good biopic. You don't really care about how accurate they are with a lot of things. It's funny what they bring up, and it's funny how you remember things in real time. You go, oh, yeah, right, that happened. And then, you know, it's got uh, all the cultural influences and everything that happens surrounding that group. It was like, I just remember being so captivated by NWA when I was a kid because it was something that was, like, banned for me. You know, not like me personally. Right. But like right. a white kid from the suburbs was like, don't listen to this. It's got, you know, like the explicit lyrics label was a big thing. Remember like Tipper Gore and all that, that whole thing in body count. Uh, so I was just like in awe of this world. I had no knowledge of whatsoever as a like 12, 13 year old. 
Uh, right. So it's fun to go back and relive that. You're like, oh, right. I forgot about that. It like, takes you back to the 90s. How, how things you know, it worked out for everybody. We obviously know, you know, Easy e and how everybody went on to do these other things. Dre and Ice Cube and all the, the lives that they ended up having. So it was cool. I, it's a good biopic. It's, it's Would you awesome. say it takes you back to the old school? Oh, yeah. you're an old fool who's so cool. <laughs> uh, no, I actually would love, would love to check it out. I, I was curious about how it was. You got some homework um, to do this week, pal. I uh, I do. I'll just I'll start watching these. Um, it's I wanted crazy to, when I think about these. Sorry to cut you off. Of like how that's right, don't how many mu- how many musical biopics there? Are. I think that dominates. Like, that I think is the usual go to because people want to be rock stars. You know, yeah. like they like they, they want to find out about. Um, uh, the, the rock stars life. So they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They make these movies. And, once and I started let's thinking be honest, like rock stars have really interesting lives. Yeah. I was just, I was just thinking about walk the line too. I was just, my, I started thinking all oh, music. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't love walk the line. I thought it was fine, but uh, I didn't love it. You know, I thought it was okay. Uh, what the line I liked, I think one of the best, um, what's it called? Cocaine blues, the, 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 him of the jail, the scene of him playing yeah. cocaine blues. Probably my favorite scene of the movie. I think it's a pretty bad. I think it's as far as authentically Johnny Cash. I think that's the closest you're going to get to it with that movie. You know, right, right, right. Uh, and uh, but I the movie's like it's like a, it's like one of those things where you're like, yeah, it's a good movie. It's a it's a good movie. Yeah, agreed. it's not. I'm not going to sit there. And go, it, it probably should have been a movie that you were like, oh my god, it's amazing. But I just didn't reach that level. I think it's also a thing where it's like, if you get to a point like 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 how close they are to the real person really figures into it. Yeah. Here's one I think sums up exactly what you just said the same way is Bohemian Rhapsody. Did you watch that? The Queen biopic? I never, I never watched it. Uh, oh, my God. I, you got like four things to watch this week. I know, I know, I know. I, uh, but but I, I also, I don't know why I didn't watch it. I, I, I was going to and then I lost interest. And you, know what, I, you know what happens to me? Whenever I, whenever I hear stories surrounding things of what movies could have been, it yeah. makes me want to watch it less. Like when I heard it was originally going to be Sasha Baron Cohen and it was way darker and it dealt with all the way more issues and it would have been like um, a real dude. somber tone. I, when I realized what it became and Robbie Malik is awesome. I, I think he's an awesome actor. I, yeah, it makes actor. me go, it makes me go, why, why bother? Well, yeah. But I think that was up. Yeah. 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 But it makes me go, why bother watching it? Because it, it could have been this amazing thing, you know? And I agree. People, he, but he was probably amazing in it, Rami. But the thing about it is, is that um, nobody was talking about. They were talking that he he got he got the award, but the movie didn't get nominated for best picture. I don't think did it. I it might have just because you know there was now no chance fourteen yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. best picture nominees. But yeah. agree, it was very popcorny, and I remember. Thank you for reminding me when Sasha Baron Cohen signed on. I went fantastic. That's going to be amazing. And yeah, I think. It was a lot darker. And here's the thing that it was a big criticism of Bohemian Rhapsody. They left out like a lot of the darkness and it wasn't very accurate around Freddie Mercury. And, yeah, like, because they, a lot of these things a get lot of the debauchery. A lot of the time what happens from what I understand, obviously I'm not an uh, a, a, a expert on Hollywood, but what happens is the more – it's like too many cooks in the kitchen situation. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so when you – Too many cooks. Too many. <laughs> Have you ever seen so that? When, of course, yeah. Oh, it's great. Uh, it's a half hour of opening titles for the show, right? It's so <laughs> good. Uh, don't swim. Um, so too many cooks in the kitchen. So when you get people involved, like I think you, I think Brian May's wife was involved, or Brian May was involved, but then yeah. there was somebody that was involved that like didn't want it to be dark, or maybe it was Brian May that didn't want it to be dark. So then they're like, all right, and the people who are funding it, they have a say in it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I, after a while, like there's a lot of things that a movie can be if there was no restrictions and there was no business aspect to it it was just putting out the best possible product but when you have everybody thinks they know what's best for it you, you get it you get it. That, that's not a shitty movie but you get something way different that's what i'm trying to say i would just like to say brian may is one of my favorite guitarists of all time i love his tone and i love his soloing and i was at sirius xm one day and i left a studio and i was walking down the hallway and this was when queen had reunited with like Adam Lambert, maybe sing. It was yeah, some that was like semi recently, so it wasn't that yeah. long ago. It was like 2014, and you know they're obviously older now, but he still got that like very Brian May haircut. Yeah, of course. And I yeah. walked by. And, Those guys don't get rid of that. Even Richie yeah, yeah. Sambora still looks like he did. <laughs> Ten feet after I walked by, I went. I froze, and I was like, 
I think I just walked by Brian May and Queen. It was just one of those things yeah. I didn't notice who it was as I was walking by them. And then I yeah, fucking yeah. lost my mind. Like, it became it was like, unrecognizable a little bit. Yeah, it was like a movie. I ran back, but they were already gone. Ah! <laughs> No, but when it comes to, I, I will check out Bohemian Rhapsody, but I think that's what gets in my head. Yeah. If I hear, that's why when I go see a movie um, with no input, it's one of the, especially nowadays. Sure, yeah. That's one of the best things you can do. Oh, yeah. Still, still, I like things. to go in fresh. I like to go in fresh. <laughs> oh, how do we not talk about it? Yeah, we'll talk about him at the end. We'll, we'll, well Jerry Stiller. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, but the, well, the last movie, well, I wanted to bring up one. And I think this really trumps all the, all of them. We didn't even think about it. It beats Amadeus. It beats Raging Bull. One thing Is we didn't music? think of. What? Oh, okay. I was going to try and guess, but go ahead. I bet you you must you must be thinking this one now. Uh, Gotti, Gotti with John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said Gandhi at first. I was like, right. oh no, 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 not Gandhi. No, Gotti with John Travolta, which which could be. Like when that came out, and we we, 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 we battled this with uh, I don't think you were on the episode. I think I had we had a guest and you weren't on it. Yeah. Um, and with Pat, Pat battled it with us. Uh, Pat Stango, he said it was a good movie. He was doing it tongue in cheek. He doesn't yeah, actually yeah. believe that. I'll tell it's you, it's not even a movie. Like Gotti is not even a, a movie. <laughs> it's not. There's no watch it, and you're gonna go. This makes no fucking sense. It's like one of those kind of things. I'll tell Obviously, you what the kidding, the HBO TV movie. Gotti with Armand Asante is good. Uh, I heard that's good. But I have the DVD of it somewhere around here. Um, yeah, it's, on, it's still on the thing, probably. I'm guessing HBO Go. Where I can't going? believe I was able to grab it that quickly. Oh my god! Yeah, Armand Asante. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I just have. A, I never saw it because I, I once again I have a um, an aversion to anything with Armand Asante. It's not even in there. Somebody borrowed it. <laughs> It's not in the package. Andy just Andy just uh, opened the package and it's not in there. <laughs> Quick, did I need somebody to do coke in, off. Did you have a cat burglar come into your apartment and steal one DVD? <laughs> yeah, it was Armand DeSante himself. Armand DeSante came. He's like, I need the copy. I got to do coke off of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I actually would check that one out. But the it's other good. One, it's good. The other one is so bad, and it's a perfect example of too many cooks because his sons were involved. Like, there's moments in Gotti, the, the bad one. Don't get me wrong. It's, not, it's unwatchable. But you see a thing. Like, there's the moment when he's in jail and he's an old man and, and Travolta's playing him as an old man that you're like, that could have been the whole movie and that would have been good with, right. with, 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 with decent flashbacks. But they just it, – it is so – also because Gotti basically – Gotti wasn't a good guy. Like, that's the thing about There's no, no redeemable things about Gotti. Like, yeah. like the thing about Henry Hill is that like you can almost say there was some redeemable watch or they or the book made it seem that way. Yeah, Gotti's just a fucking dumb. And a lot of these guys are when you have somebody who's brilliant in the in the biopic, it it adds to it. Gotti was just kind of a dopey guy. Like, he was yeah, just I mean, Gotti was that first guy who broke the mafia rules. Like he whacked his fucking like hierarchy. You know, it was just like right. right. Yeah, he, he, you know, his neighbor uh, hit his, like, kid when he was younger, and, like, the neighbor disappeared. It was like, well, obviously. Well, well, to give you an – okay, here we go. The neighbor hit the kid with his car, with his car right? And the yeah. neighbor disappeared. But they – the way they do it in the movie, it was – you would think you're like, man, the guy just took a vacation. Like, it's like it's – like, Right, of course. Like, the guy, like he didn't – like, the guy, they cartoon yeah, you know, mafia did it. Like they 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 make that they make the death of the kid like a like a dream sequence. It's, oh really? It's, it's very like it's shot so poorly, and then they um they make very little reference to the the fact that he killed this random dude that lived on his block. Hachi machi. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, a lot of these guys they have the rules. Hey, it stays within the mob. You don't kill civilians. And this guy, you know, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. And to you know to round things out. Uh, we didn't mention this in the beginning, but unfortunately, you know, this is a this is kind of a Seinfeld podcast. That amount of we talk about it. Uh, what a sad week! And it's really a bummer. Uh, Jerry Monday morning. Died, which what a Monday morning point. piece of news to wake up to. Yeah, it's a bummer. The guy was in his nineties. I, I I don't think was it Corona. Does anybody know? No, it was natural causes. He was ninety two. Yeah, years old. he's ninety two years old. I you know what a like you know what a great life. What a funny guy. Like from all the stories, like we. Have I mean the funny. 
that are Jerry Stiller adjacent and that, that, that knew him and, and like Danny Cohen, the comic, he spent time for, like, on, on Christmas at his house and he was like, uh, could not have been a sweeter man. So he just seemed like a really good guy that, that liked comedy a lot and was just like, and the fact that anybody who's married that long and the, the relationship him and his wife had seems so for real, you know, and she yeah. passed away, I think, uh, passed away a few years ago. Right? Years ago. But uh, uh, and Mira and uh, and uh, yeah, I think that they had a comedy troupe together, and they're best they yeah. parents. Like it, like it's just all good things. Like you know, a lot of people you want to put good things out into the world, and all that guy did was put good things out into the world. Yeah, you know? he just brought joy to me and everybody. Every time you see him on screen, you re- you forgot. I I didn't realize he wasn't in Seinfeld till season five. Which is crazy to think. Uh, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it it's, was so uh, fun. Somebody else put that online. I was like, "You're right. That's crazy. How how long it took?" Because you think of him as such a big part of the show. Yeah, and it was super fun to watch all the bloopers resurface again, and just to uh, we actually had John O'Hurley on my radio show on Sirius XM, who played Jay Peterman, and he was telling us how on set he's like, you know, in the blooper scene of Del Boca Vista, which is one of the most famous Del, Del Beco Bisto, he can't get right. He goes, "Yeah." There's like 10 more minutes of those outtakes. He goes, they had <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how he knows that because he, he wasn't there for that day of shooting. He probably just found out or whatever. No, that was an interesting thing because when we had him on, we go, we, we asked him obviously about Jerry Stiller and he goes, we go, oh, we can't think of any Jay Peterman, Frank Costanza scenes. He goes, no, but we were always there. He goes, it was a big family. He goes, also the oh. writer. Sometimes for those characters, you never knew when they would need a Jay Peterman. He was like, so I was called to set a lot on standby just because I might be needed. If they wanted to write in to like exactly. see on the street kind of thing. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I never knew that. That's, that's he goes, so yeah, that I, goes, so I was, an, I was an audience member for a lot of episodes I'm not even in. He goes, it was a great job to have, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because he's getting, they're obviously paying him for the day or whatever and, you know. I think he was being more sentimental about it. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, he was. But I'm saying, but getting paid that, to watch working, Seinfeld, yeah. But he's still a working actor. He still had that in course, mind. Of you know, course. Yeah. If they and, called him uh, and didn't pay him, you know, he'd be like, eh, it was great, but, I, you know, whatever. But yeah, from uh, anyone you know who came in contact with him, just apparently a very sweet man and obviously one of the funniest of all times. He just, he had that old vaudevillian herky jerky way of moving his body and it just yeah. fucking went, it just went with his. His emoting and his screaming so perfectly. It's just, I mean, just God-given hilarity, man. There's a video online, because there used to be another George Costanza dad they replaced. And there's a video online. Oh, they really? brought him in. They go, they, Larry, Larry David tells him, oh, we had this other guy, but it wasn't really working. And I forget the reason why, but he was telling him, we just want you to play, uh, play the lines understated. Yeah, uh, and then he did that at first, and then in one of the moments he yelled big, and everybody lost it. And they're like, "All right, just do that from now on." Right, like one of those kind of moments where it's like, "Okay, you have the right idea. We we fucked up." Kind of thing. Which also worked twofold because then when he did do it uh, understated, it was so funny because oh, you're used to fantastic. him being, you know, just him. Tommy Toon is very tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think well, the studio would be a lot friendlier with name tags. How you doing, Sam? <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hello, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he's so. Well, you know, one of my favorites is it's the, uh, it's the, uh, the place to be. Place to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a weird line. It's not even like it's such a weird, strange line. It's and so the other funny. one's great. Everybody's been quoting this one online this week when they go, "Jerry, it's George Costanza. George is dead. Mr. Steinbrenner is here. Call me back." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's your so favorite uh, Jerry Stiller line from Seinfeld? Oh my God, that's really, really tough to. I mean, stop short. His the way he delivers it with the hand. Ooh, I stop so short. funny. Um, I I think though, I love any sort of Frank and Kramer, uh, you know, scheme. Oh yeah, I love their schemes yes. together. Obviously, the bro and the man's ear, just them battling. I love when he goes, not bro, too ethnic. How about it's <laughs> too ethnic. Too ethnic. <laughs> but it's also I I have a soft spot in my in the, for that scene when uh, Estelle and George come back to George's apartment and they catch Kramer outfitting Frank with the bro and they're kind of dancing yeah. because it also ties in the record player and he's got this uh, you know cha cha music going on and Kramer yeah. and it looks. 
<laughs> and it leads to Estelle saying the line, and I've never seen my dad laugh harder in his entire life. He goes, 40 years I lived with the man. Not once did he ever look at my underwear. Second he moves out of the house, he turns into Jagger Hoover. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I saw my dad fall out of his chair laughing just because it's such a funny reference to the Jagger Hoover cross dressings. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Brilliant and, stuff. And that's, when, and that's, when they were, that's around the time everybody was finding that stuff out. That was, re, that, that was a recent story at that time yeah. about the Jagger Hoover cross dressing. The other thing is, a great moment in that when she walks in is that. Jerry Stiller kind of stops and looks at her like he doesn't look surprised. He's just kind of staring at her like what? But, he but Kramer, you're doing it. it. Kramer, he da- he dances very little. Kramer very is little, just full subtle. on like, hey guys, like not <laughs> subtle at all, dancing away. Oh, just like well, there's nothing wrong going on here, you know. We could do this for 40 more minutes, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well let's right, uh, wrap Jerry this Stiller. puppy up. R.I.P. J. Dog. <laughs> as he was known on set. R.I.P. Big Homie, as uh, Andrew Fury would say. <laughs> uh, I will do my plugs. I, I'm at Shawnee Time on Instagram and Twitter. Also, guys, make sure that you uh, subscribe and follow us on Twitter. We're at Defend Your Movie on Twitter and at Defend Your Movie on uh, Instagram. And then uh, make sure you subscribe, rate, and review the show. It really helps the show. Um, I actually wouldn't mind putting, uh, I'll tell you after I was about to say, I want to put a thing in the beginning of the episode. Um, so yeah, answer. that's it at Shawnee time and that stuff. Sorry, Andy, go ahead. No problem. Uh, you can follow me on the social media at Andy Fiori. That's a N D Y F I O R I and check out my Sirius XM radio show. It's every Thursday at 4 PM on Sirius XM raw dog 99. It's called the raw report. Uh, we just interview comedians and people in entertainment and uh, you can catch up on On Demand, and they're giving away free SiriusXM through the month of May. So if you've never had it, uh, now's the time to check it out. Uh, no strings attached, so go do that. And uh, I hope everybody's doing well and staying safe and being healthy and taking care of themselves. Uh, thank you so much for listening, guys. Defenders, you're the best. And Love we you. will see you next week, baby. Adios. Adios.